Okay, we're back inside theCUBE, siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv's exclusive coverage of EMC World 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of siliconangle.com, and we go out to the events, uh, extract the signal from the noise as an independent organization to get the, uh, let's get the scoop and signal uh, from the noise, extract it, share it with you. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. We're very excited to have Scott McNeely, who is the chairman CEO of weighin.com. I'm Welcome. the chairman, not You're CEO. Chairman. No, no, what am I saying? Much better, much Why would be, you do that? Much better be a chairman. <laughs> yeah. I'm not in a pinata anymore. <laughs> so. Who's the poor, who's the poor CEO? Uh, Tom Jessamine. All right, yeah. okay, good. Well, welcome, Scott. Thanks for taking some time Great. to stop by. Great so, to be good here. Good to see you again. So, uh, UMC World, this is, uh, this is different, you know? And years ago, they wouldn't let you in, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> now, yeah now I feel like I'm inside uh, infiltrating well, enemy lines, but you know what? I, I don't own any uh, Oracle stock, so I'm uh, yeah. free and clear to help yeah. out whoever asks. And Joe Tucci and Pat Gelsinger and Bill Cook and all the guys are, uh, Utilizing me a lot, and I'm enjoying it, and it's kind of fun. So. Yeah, we saw you at the chorus launch, and uh, what was the line you had yesterday? You used to be famous, and now you're on the cube. Is that yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what do you think of all the action in tech now? Being that you've had, a, you know, a major player in that for years, going back, and you know, our, my generation, the Unix generation, um, and I actually have a computer science degree, unlike other people out there claiming they do. Um, but uh, what's changed? What are you seeing right now? Obviously, you know, distributed computing is making a comeback. Emphasis on systems. The uh, network is the computer. Somebody said that a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah I now mean. they call it cloud. I should have just done, said one word and it would have, <laughs> would have been a lot easier. But I mean, uh, seriously, this network is the computer. You got the edge, you got virtualization happening. What's your take on all this? Uh, and, you know, we, we said a long time, you know, any device, anytime, any place, anywhere, that's all. You know, I hear people saying that. EMC was saying that yesterday in their uh, Area 51 uh, conversation. All of the stuff we were talking about, you know, wearable computing, uh, mobile, wallets, you know, your wallet gets replaced by your phone, that's all happening. It, it's all good, it's all, it's all wonderful, and uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a positive step you forward. You mentioned on the opening you're excited to work with Joe Tucci and Bill, uh, Bill Cook, uh, who used to work with you at Sun, uh, kind of the old school guys kind of leading these, these companies through the transformation, but now you're also excited about social, uh, social data and social infrastructure, really, and so, uh, obviously we're big on the social cloud and mobile, we love it as well. Um, and a lot of people think it's like a very gimmicky PR kind of thing going on with social and you know likes and fan book, fan book pages, fan pages. But underneath is it's infrastructure, and uh, you know the network is the computer, but we're all distributed and connected. Right. So it's a, it's really a distributed computing problem. So share with us your, your why you're excited about social social infrastructure and what share some insight into that. Well, well social is is where you're capturing the the demographic, the sentiment, the confirmed buying intent, uh, and the knowledge as well as. Uh, capturing the interests uh, and, and the gaming component. So if you look at the internet, it started off with AOL, you got mail, and then uh, Beanie Babies from eBay, and then you got into Google PageRank Search, and then you got into iTunes, uh, and then you got into Facebook with their uh, relationship status, <clears throat> and then we got into Zynga with gaming and Twitter and uh, tweets, and we think there's another new phase, and that is a one-to-many conversation phase, and that's what we're pushing with weigh-in. Uh, and the difference between weigh-in, I believe, besides the fact that we're kind of going after something different and a new wave, and everybody thinks, oh, the past waves will, remember AOL was going to be? The, they were the, the granddaddy of the internet. It, it was yeah. never going to, nothing ever was going to beat them, right? Yeah. You know, that's what they, their Facebook gets compared a lot to AOL. Right. I mean, and, and we are, we'll look at Facebook since they went public. They're already, you know, <laughs> what, what the heck. Right. So, <laughs> Time Warner's going to buy them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, they might, mer mer might mer merge with uh, MySpace at some point here, who knows. But, the, the, we wanted to build something that actually had value in the media space, in the social media space, for enterprises, for uh, celebrities, for brands, for enterprises, and for governments. Because they all wanted to have client engagement. And Twitter's a great one-to-many broadcast. Uh, YouTube's a great one-to-many uh, uh, publication, you know. Distribution, media outlet. They're all kind of one-to-many pushes. Shout outs, right, you know. And we said, well, why don't we close the loop on the conversation with real-time feedback, real-time comments. Kind of like handshaking in networking protocol Yeah, language, bingo, right? right. And, and, uh, and doing it in real time and everybody gets to see it. So we built this architecture. So now how did we do it? Well, there's companies out there that have huge website traffic, but they don't really know how to engage them. So we put an iframe in that talks back to the way in database. There's a whole bunch of people that have, we're talking to a soccer comp team that has 22 million people on their fan page, they don't know how to, so we build an application of weigh-in on uh, their Facebook page that again talks back to the database. 
Twitter is, I mean, this is the hot, Twitter's the hottest thing, I think, in <laughs> social media right now. Great. They own events, and we did Twit polls here at EMC during keynotes, during events, during uh, broadcasts, all the rest of it, and it allows, it's basically an application that resides on top of Twitter and uses Twitter infrastructure to allow tweets to basically be collated, tabulated, reported on, and uh, creates a Twitter conversation, not a Twitter broadcast. And boom, now all of these inform uh, the, the way in database, which is why we're here at EMC. Greenplum is a uh, uh, big data analytics uh, partner of ours, and uh, we're going to be going to What's market What's your partnership with, with Greenplum? Are they providing gear, so, software? So, so basically, we're using them to take the data that we have and make it manageable, uh, uh, organizable, analytical, you know, do the analytics on it and, and the business reporting. And so we'll go after verticals like human resources and go to companies and say, listen, we can give you real-time polling and uh, sentiment gathering with your employees <coughs> and Greenplum will here provide you with the analytics and reporting uh, uh, for all of this big data that you're going to be capturing with, with your employee base. So, so what other guys have tried this, you know, poll anywhere, and you guys are different, H how so? Well, we're different because we've gone totally mobile, it runs on your iPhone, your iPad, your Android, it runs on your Facebook page, it runs in your Twitter feed, it runs in your, in your um, website as well as our microsites. But it all informs one common database, and we built the architecture from day one to be manageable and reportable and anal you know with analytics, that sort of thing. So what do you do with all this data? I mean, this so there's, there's lots uh, marketeers want to do with the data. What's in different about our data, you think about the old days of Nielsen, they put a set-top box up there because they wanted to find out what channel you were watching, but they had no idea if anybody was in the room, how many people were in, because they're trying to get a demographic, because a demographic might drive a sentiment which might drive a buying intent. So then a little later on, they tried to figure out who was in there, how many people were watching, what were they watching, do they like what they were watching, and, and they have very, very small numbers. Well now we can basically get hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions of people, and we skip all of this demographic uh, and sentiment stuff, and we ask them a very simple question. Are you going to buy a long belly putter this summer uh, <laughs> to play golf? And you know, yeah. and the guy votes yes. You've now gone yeah. through all this. No more inference. No more analytics. You got very clear. Uh, you know, no guessing. It, it might have been you know a uh, 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 you know, 98 year old grandmother who doesn't play golf, and you would never infer that from any of the data, any of the shows she watches. She just happens to have a great grandson who plays golf and wants a belly putter. But now you know how to advertise a belly. You know who. You have confirmed buying intent, very different than... Uh, Scott, so share with the folks out there your insight, because obviously you have a unique perspective being um, in your role in the industry and then you know, acting as a chairman of a really cutting edge company. That, explain to them why social's not passe right now. There's been some write-ups in the, in the, in the journal I actually had with Forbes, uh, uh, Rich Carlgard at Forbes wrote, oh, it's on the journal, it's it's article. Social, yeah. it's like, social's a silly word, and we love silly words, and we find new ways to make something old sound new, because when I started at Sun in 1982, we were talking about distributed computing, and the VAX was distributed computing compared to the mainframe, and then workstations yeah, yeah. was distributed yeah. computing, and you know yeah. what? Distributed computing is nothing more than... Connection. Yeah, it's just, it's <laughs> networked computing. It's, the network is, yeah, yeah. it's cloud. Actually, and social is bad, and, and you go outside the U.S., social, the word social you know means social socialism. Yeah. You go, I, I'm against social. You know, what so, you know what social is? It started off, social computing was TCP IP, then it was NFS, then it yeah. was email, then it was HTTP and HTML, and then it, you know, and then it went to SMS, and it's, Actually, if you it, look at the most successful social media Twitter's companies today. It's just SMS, it's yeah. just SMS it's on steroids. Yeah. It's networking, all of the best products out there have guys from networking background. It's all go, TCP IP, it is all, that's all social is, is TCP IP, it's just. Yeah. Interconnections. It's just, it's just it's a GUI built on TCP IP. <laughs> uh, as, as that's about as technical uh, as you're going to get out of this golf <laughs> All right. But I did, I did get a Harvard degree. I okay. promise you, I did. Yeah, you you <laughs> could prove that. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, and I'll even show you my transcript. <laughs> I have my transcript. A brochure certificate. I got resume, the whole deal. I got the whole deal. <laughs> I asked Mike Olson, the CEO of Cloud Air, I interviewed him yesterday at the HBase conference. I said, Michael, do you have a, uh, do you have a CS degree? Yes, he was. I got two of them from Berkeley. I can prove it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Mine was a golf degree with a minor <laughs> in economics. <so. laughs> Uh, I didn't even know, I went to Northeast, you know, I my degree was in. Um, <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> it's like I see the Dartmouth guy and I say, are you an alcoholic? <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm going to get letters from every Dartmouth guy. I resemble that. Um, um, so let's, <laughs> let's chat about, 
<laughs> nice, nice, nice one there. Um, I, I'm not a CEO of a public company yeah. anymore. I can say stuff. No, that's good. It's the cube. <laughs> say it. Oh, you so, had the gloves on the whole so, time. So, well, while, while we're showing that out, what do you think about HP right now? I mean, this, what a disaster. I mean, you know, you've, you've worked at that company. I, I mean, you know, I Larry got, hates them. He's trying to take them down. Mark heard it with Larry, and Meg Whitman's up there. It's just falling you know, apart. I don't think HP's falling apart. I think it's a really solid company. I think they got great product. They got great. I'll tell you what, I, I'd kill to have the printer business, and I said that for the last 25 years. Uh, it's a great franchise. They've got a, a global uh, footprint that very few companies have. They have a solid brand out there, and I think they've got one of the great leaders that I've ever known, and, uh, yeah. and, and I support Meg Whitman 2,000%. She's a great lady. She's yeah. very high integrity. She's got a tough job. You don't, it, it takes as long to fix something as you spent screwing it up. Yeah, so, so let's talk about that, because she ran for governor. Been a, it's been a few Yeah, you few can't years. put this yeah, on I her. Mean, California's yeah, I mean, California's changed. I mean, I mean, I moved out here 12 years ago, and I live in Palo Alto, and, it, and Silicon Valley was magical, but now it just seems that the government is just like, you know, you, starting a company in California is a lot, a lot harder. She didn't get the governor nod. Maybe we wish we had, she had, but what, is, what do you see her doing at HP right now? Because is she's, you know, laying off some people. They need to lay off some people, so I'm not really harsh on that, but that's just they have too many people to begin with. But you know, what, what, is, what is she thinking about? You know her well. What, what's her mindset right now at HP? I, I think she's doing the right thing. I mean, somebody, uh, what, somebody asked me, what would you do if you were, give some advice to Zuckerberg? I said, get out of California fast. <laughs> That was my advice, <laughs> do it now. Yeah. We started way in, where did we start it? In Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Beautiful place, Boulder? lower tax like Denver. Denver, right downtown Denver. It's a spectacular place, low cost, uh, yeah. great skiing, beautiful weather. People go Talent. there, people yeah. go, well we were the largest employer, Sun was in, in uh, Colorado. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When when uh, I was uh, chairman, so there's there's lots of great it's golf, good there. skiing over there, great outdoors. It's it's spectacular. So she can't move out of California. So she's got that problem. Uh, she also has you know a huge uh, number of over 300,000 employees. That's that's a big city. Huge. So you know, and she's global. So she's dealing with all. I mean, there's a, more constraints on her than you know. It's a it's a Fortune nine company. I think she's doing exactly right. She settled things down. There's no more intrigue, there's no more, you know, it's not good news that you got to lay off 25,000 people, but you know what? It's got to be done. Yeah, it's got to be done. Yeah, right? yeah. Cut the so, track. I got to tell you, John, so last time, you may not remember this, I'm sure you don't, but it must have been late 90s, I was interviewing you, we were talking about, you, you were doing your thing and bashing HP and everybody else. What? There. Yeah, and uh, it was good, it was good stuff. And you said, I said, Scott, you got printer envy. You said, no, I got ink envy. Yeah, and, printer uh, ink envy, yeah. And so a lot of people talk about, oh, this guy's got to spin off that division, spin off the PC division. You know, what do you think about that? Do you, do you think that's the right way to go or keep it all together? You know, I, that's a, that's a, probably a full semester business school case study. Well, you said you went to Harvard. Uh, uh, Harvard undergrad, Stanford <laughs> Business School. I never got into Harvard Business School. They wouldn't have me. I was a you legacy. Better. I was a legacy. Well, Why would golfing. they want me there? Yeah. Yeah. I did get to Harvard, <laughs> never mind. Um, so, you know, there's, there's three places you can set up your company. You can be a broker. Amazon's a beautiful broker. Mm. And, and Walmart and Amazon are beautiful brokers. You can be a services company, and you can be an asset-based services company like AT&T with you know, fiber in the ground, or you can be a headcount-based services company like an EDS or IBM Global Services, and then there's products companies which do heavy R&D. And you can be on any one of the triangles. There's a fourth, which is the pyramid, which you can be a media company where you actually create content, like a News Corp or whatever. Now you can be one or two of those, or you can try and be three, it'd be impossible to be four, because yeah. then everybody hates you, and you have no friends. And uh, what we always tried to fight at Sun was a one front war. We were an R&D company, and we tried to work with the integrators and the service providers. We tried to work with the media companies, and we tried to work with the brokers to all use our product, but we were focused on R&D and building product, and that, it was very easy to organize the company. Yeah, we were right. organized by chips, workstations, operating systems, middleware, and services. Car maker. It was, yeah. You know, that's your yeah, analogy, yeah, and I, you know, exactly listen right. closely. And, and the problem that Meg has inherited is she is EDS services, she's printer and, um, what was the um, OS that they, uh, uh, web, web OS. Oh, uh, oh yeah, web OS. Yeah, web yeah. OS, right, and then uh, they're a broker because Compaq and the PC business is basically brokering. Car dealer. In Intel and yeah. Microsoft yeah. and Asian power supplies. 
So she's she's got a very complex business, and uh, she's got to figure out how to how to make. And so she's fighting a three front. One of the other great lines you had was uh, the the innovation at Dell. Tell Michael I uh, said hi. The, his greatest innovation was the W, w on the keyboard, and uh, you're seeing Dell change you know the model. You know, tough earnings today, but um, it's interesting to see that transformation, right? I mean, right. bringing in IP, getting rid of EMC, doing their own storage. You know, yeah, our our big transformation at Sun was that. We've, I always talked about the big friggin' web tone switch, right? And, and you know, it was a natural for a company that had the database and the applications uh, to, to run and, and integrate, and I think Larry's doing the right things of integrating and creating that, yeah. that big web tone switch that, that has all of, uh, has web tone and database tone and app tone. I got a direct message on Twitter. Um, from someone that wants to know what your handicap is. My handicap? Yeah. I'm 57, I'm married, I have four boys. <laughs> I, I, I spent way golf too much. Golf handicap. <laughs> no more scratch yeah, golf. Those, those are my handicap. Those are my, those are my, <laughs> <those> are my <laughs> handicap. <laughs> it's, it's interesting, when I was a little younger, it was a plus two, but it's 7.5 index and rising right now. Yeah. Uh, I went out and snuck out this morning and played golf with my wife. She beat me, so. Uh, oh How well. many tricks did you give her? Uh, I didn't give her any. She, gave me, <laughs> well, she got she got to play up the front tees. I played the back tees. But. Um, well, okay. Well, thanks for having me on the cube here. We're excited to, to chat with you. Anytime you want to chat, we'd love to have you on. Uh, everybody, go to twitpolls.com and weighin.com. Sign up. It's really cool. It's fantastic. Twitpolls is unbelievable. Yeah. Start having business. start having yeah. conversations with your key constituencies, even if it's just your kid. I think it's exciting that uh, someone of Scott's background recognizes that the distributed computing of social networking is really some science and some opportunity, so um, there's more there than you think, and uh, that's a great message for other entrepreneurs out there, so uh, uh, thanks for sharing that, and we believe in it as well. Uh, we'll be right back with a wrap-up right after this break. <laughs>